Welcome to this video on multi-loop circuits, strategies for solving multiple unknown currents. In this video, we're going to put together all of the ideas that we've learned so far about the junction rule, uh, Kirchhoff's loop rule, and we're going to use those to solve for a situation when we have a current that is splitting and rejoining at different junctions so that there's multiple unknown values throughout each branch of the circuit. I also want to acknowledge that this image comes from the opentextbc.ca website, a really useful resources over there uh, that include many different OpenStax textbooks, and the, just, the link is in the description below, and I highly recommend checking those out. They're really great. So let's go ahead and, and see now how this circuit is arranged. So I want to know how many different currents there are. If this was just one single loop, of course the current would be the same, but because I have a junction here at B and I have a junction here at E, I'm going to have current splitting and rejoining in different places. So the first thing I'm going to do is determine which circuit elements share the same current, and another way to put that is to say that those circuit elements that share the same current are in series with one another. So I use the strategy of tracing from one circuit element to the next, and I see that there's no junction in between, and so these two share the same current. So I'm going to use the label EMF here instead of V. So I'm going to say that EMF1 and R1 both share the current that I'm naming I1. I see over here that R1 and R2 are not in series with one another because I hit a junction in between moving from one to the other. And then I also see that R2 is actually having its own current. It's not in series with anything else. So what I'm going to list here is that R2 has its own current that I'm going to label I2. And then finally, hopefully you're starting to see now that the corners are, are, are merely just a direction change, that R3, R4, and uh, EMF2 are all in series with one another. So I'm going to go ahead and list those out. EMF2, R3, R4, and I'm going to say that they share whatever current I decide to label it, and I'm going to label it I3. So what I see here is that there are three unknown currents. Now they relate to one another in that they'll add or subtract or split or rejoin at the junctions, but they are three distinct currents when they are running through whichever appropriate circuit element we're looking at. So let's just take a step aside here for a second and think about when we have multiple unknown values, what we would do in an abstract mathematical sense is we would have to write um, more than one equation to solve for more than one unknown, and we call that a system of equations. So the system of equations hopefully is something that you're familiar with. Um, I'm going to solve this system in a part two to this video just because it will take a little while to set all of this up and then uh, in the next video we'll solve it. But the system of equations is designed so that I could take three different unknown variables, write three different equations that relate them to one another, and then use one of a variety of methods to solve um, I could use substitution, elimination, subtraction. I can also use a matrix, which is actually a very quick way to do it, um, but not everybody is familiar with the matrix, so um, I will show probably one of the other methods. So what I need to do next is I need to, now that I've identified my variables, I3, I2, and I1, I need to write three different equations that relate these to one another. And the way that I'm going to do that is by using the loop rule and the junction rules. So the loop rule uh, will be used more than one time because I have, as you can see here, multiple loops that I could choose, right? And remember, a loop doesn't have to include the entire circuit. When we're just looking at one particular loop, that's totally fine to not include all uh, variables or all circuit elements. Another way you can look at that is 
that the current's not the same, right? And to make a full loop, you have to start and end at the same place, and you can't go through the middle branch, let's say, if you use this outer loop. Now, you have to be careful when you think about the loop rule here, is that, let's say I move from point A through a loop here, through B, through E, through F, and back to A. This loop does not mean that all of these things are in series with one another. Right, and that's really important because what's happening here is as I move through this circuit, I'm moving through multiple currents. As I get into this branch here, BE, I see that the current has switched and then the current switches back to one again and so on. So you can see that making a loop does not mean that you are including just one current, which is actually better because when we write a systems of equations, we want to relate the variables to one another, not just have them on their own. Okay, so as I just said, we're going to use the loop rule and the junction rules to write a system of equations, and we need at least three equations to solve this. My starting point, the first equation that I will solve is, um, or that I will write, is using the junction rule. And remember, the junction rule is a statement of conservation of charge and it means that whatever current flows into a junction has to flow out of that junction. Okay, So the sum of the currents flowing in is equal to the sum of the currents flowing out. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to highlight the three different currents that I have so that I can get a better view of what's actually occurring here in this circuit. So here I have two different currents that kind of come together if I decide on my direction. So I'm going to say the direction of the current here, I, what I named I3, is going to start here. It's going to be pushed through, and then it's going to come over here and get pushed back down here, back to the negative term of the battery. Now I have to note that it switches to a different current here in the middle because of the fact that it enters this junction. And that's okay. We're going to relate the currents that are going into this junction with the current that's coming out. Over here, I'm going to draw a current from the positive all the way through, hit the junction, and I see that's going to turn down this way and turn back to the left and hit the battery again. So what I can say here, if I look at these, you can kind of see, based on the way that I've drawn this, hopefully, that these two currents here, I1 and I3, have added together in this middle branch to make what we could, what we'll call I2. So my junction rule is going to say that I1 plus I3 equals I2. Now you can pick other directions. If you had made yours the complete opposite direction, there's multiple ways to write this statement. As long as it shows that what's entering the junction is equal to what's leaving the junction, you're totally fine and you can write any uh, expression you want. And then as long as you keep the directions constant, then you should be fine when you're solving the problem. Okay. The next equation out of the three for the system of equations is going to be using the loop rule for one chosen loop. Okay, so I'm going to call this uh, loop one. Now I'm going to say that loop one is this over here, okay, and it's going to include this purple current and the green currents. So I'm going to go ahead and write my loop rule starting over here at this. EMF1 and work my way around dropping or adding voltages as necessary, working from this loop over here that you might call FABEF. -E okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So we have EMF1, we drop potential over R1, right? And I'm going to write that using Ohm's law here. So this potential drop is equal to I times R because R is independent of the current, it's fixed. Okay, so I'm going to put there um, three for the resistance times I1, which is what the current is when it's flowing through there. Okay, now I get to this one over here. I'm moving through this resistor, so I'm going to do minus resistor two, which is three, times I2, because that's the current that is flowing through resistor two. 
I hit E, make my way back to the battery, and I'm back to zero. So here I have one of my first equations, and I'm going to do something here just to simplify this. First I'll plug in this value, which is 24, and then I'm going to add these two terms to the other side of the equation. And that's just when I start to solve this, it just will have already been a little bit easier. Okay, so so far in, for my system of equations, I have this equation over here, I have this second equation over here, and now I'm going to do my third equation, and the third equation I'm going to use the loop rule again, but I can't use the same loop obviously because then I would get the same equation, so I'm going to use a different loop, and you have options. You could either use this right hand loop or you could use the outer loop, and either of those should work. Okay, so I'm going to start going this way, D to C to B to E back to D. So I'm going to start with my EMF2, okay, I pass through R4, so minus, we have a voltage drop there, minus 4 times I3, because that's the current flowing through resistor 4, minus 3 times I3 again because it's still the same current flowing through R3 and now I've entered the new branch as I'm completing the loop so in this one here I'm going to do minus 3 times I2 okay because that's the current flowing through R2 and then I've made my way back here and I'm at 0 now I'm going to put it in the same form that I did this one so this EMF2 is 29 Okay, and I can combine these like terms here to being negative 7i3. And I'm going to add all of these terms to this other side. So that will give me 7i3 minus or plus 3i2. So here I have three equations now that I constructed using the junction rule and then two different loop rule statements as well as Ohm's law. Now once I've done this, I can now solve this equation, which I'm going to do in the next video, just to keep this one uh, a little on the shorter side.